It is gone forever. We'll never see it again. Hello friends, my name is Brandon Dayton, and I'm your humble narrator. Welcome back to some Gen 7 random Pokemon battles. I've got a go go out against his Celebi, but I decided to switch since I can't really do much against it. And uh, I think the, the most prudent thing at the very beginning of the battle would be to set up some entry hazards. So he has a super effective uh, hidden power there. I believe it's hidden power fire or something like that. But he decides to pull it out. Switches into an Aggron, which is probably not the smartest move, uh, considering Aggron doesn't have a whole lot that it can hit Skarmory with. So I'm going to go ahead and roost the pack up to full health as he Mega Evolves, and uh, probably does some dumb shit. I'm going to set up some entry hazards, and I think he's going to set up some entry hazards as well, yep. I get my spikes out, and he sets up his Stealth Rock. Stealth Rock is probably preferable to spikes, just because uh, it only takes one turn, and... Yeah, then, it, then it's there for the remainder of the battle, but Spikes will do more damage to everything that is grounded. So he hits Skarmory with a Thunder Wave, doesn't really matter. And then uh, starts in with the Heavy Slams, which aren't going to do much damage at all, because they are resisted. So I'm kind of at a loss uh, as to why he switched, probably just to set up the entry hazards or something like that. He brings in a Hoopa now, which is a Dark Psychic from Gen 7, but I'm going to go ahead and Whirlwind it out. Um, I was trying to Whirlwind out the Aggron, since Skarmory can't do much against that either. And uh, we pull in the Alola form Sand Slash, which I think is uh, Ice and Steel or something like that. Pretty crazy Pokemon. He's going to go ahead and go for some Icicle Crashes, and recently the Flinch Hacks have just been fucking insane. <laughs> I'm not able to get any leverage against this thing. Um, so he goes for the Icicle Crash, it does pretty good damage, he's testing out the Iron Head now. And yeah, with the paralysis on me, it's really going to matter. It uh, stops me from moving just then, although I might have flinched even if I got through the paralysis. So I think I'm going to get uh, flinch hacks to death here. Para flinched to death, which is kind of surprising coming from a sand slash, but okay. As long as he doesn't rapid spin, um, I'm relatively satisfied with that. He might have rapid spin in his moveset. I've only seen Icicle Crash and Iron Head so far. But, um, yeah, if, if I was him, I would be going for the, uh, the Rapid Spin right after this Skarmory goes down. Unfortunately, I don't have any Ghost types to uh, switch into, and I wasn't able to do any damage against him because I was, uh, pair hacks to death. So I'll send him the Seismitoad now, hopefully able to take it out. Um, but first I want to set up my Stealth Rocks just in case he doesn't have that Rapid Spin. I'm really trying to lure him into it now. And he goes for the Iron Head, which is going to be a resistant hit. I'll try out my Scald here just to get like a little burn damage. That's not going to happen as he goes for the Sword Stance. And I realize now that I'm faster, so I'm going to go ahead and smash this thing with an Earthquake, which should uh, hit the Steel side super effectively. And down he goes before... Yeah, I don't know why he didn't Sword Stance up a little earlier, especially against the Skarmory, because Skarmory's not going to be able to do anything against it. Anyhow, he brings in Dragalgi, which... Um, is a Poison Dragon, I believe, from Gen 7, but that thing goes down to an Earthquake. We're not going to get to see any of its moves. Oh well. Seismitoad's out here doing some work for such a, an ugly, warty fuck. He's doing his job really well. Celebi gets taken down to 63% by entry hazards, but Seismitoad is definitely scared of those grass moves because of its water and ground typing. So I go ahead and switch into Go-Goat to absorb that, maybe get a Sap Zipper boost. But uh, I guess he sees that coming, and he goes for Psychic. Or maybe he doesn't have the uh, the grass move. I know he's got hidden power and psychic. Maybe he's got nasty block, heal bell. I don't know. It's really hard. He's uh he's only sticking to a couple of his moves. But I'll eat that hidden power and go ahead and heal it off with a milk drink, which is actually one of uh, the signature moves of Mill Tank up until Go Go was released. So that's pretty cool. And uh, I don't think I did any random battles during Gen 6, so Gogo might be a, a new addition to the, the lineup as well. But uh, I know I did some Gen 5 battles, and Seismitoad was a total bro. And here he is, out here again, uh, kind of just trying to see if he actually has the grass move, and I guess he doesn't, because uh, he goes for the psychic. And I'm also trying to preserve my Gogo just a little bit. I didn't want him to eat another Hidden Power Fire, because we just end up healing back and forth until he got a crit and killed me. So, here's a major misplay. I switch into the Law Honey and Mega Evolve, which gives it a Fighting-type, uh, secondary-type, which is not good. 
I should have just stayed as the normal law bunny until the Celebi was out of the way. Um, and then its psychics wouldn't be doing super effective damage against it. But oh well, it be what it be. I hit it with an ice punch, doesn't do much. Hit it with a return, does about the same. And uh, law bunny goes down to a psychic, which is really, really unfortunate. Because that Pokemon is so fucking fast. Great revenge killer. Uh, but unfortunately now it is... It is gone forever. We'll never see it again. So here's the Crocodile. I know he probably doesn't have the grass move, and this Crocodile is scarfed anyways. So I go for a resisted Earthquake, and I don't have the Moxie boost, but that's just fine. I should be able to uh, sweep through the Aggron and the Hoopa as well, especially with all that entry hazard damage. Look at that. My god. If you get a full layer of spikes and Stealth Rocks, you're going to be uh, taking 60... Taking any Pokemon that switches in down to 63%. Bear Arctic does not resist the Stealth Rocks. He is weak to it, so he loses 25 from the Stealth Rocks and another 25 from Spikes, bringing him down to half health. And uh, Aqua Jet's not going to do much against the Crocodile. I don't think he was banded or anything like that. So all that he has left is the uh, Agron, which might be able to be taken down with one Earthquake, but I'm not sure because that defense is fucking massive. Yeah, look at that. He eats that Earthquake right up, and, um... Agron has a Rock and Steel typing, but when it Mega Evolves, it's only Steel, so it goes from, uh, four times weakness to only two times weakness, which helps in weathering those Earthquakes. Uh, and he weathers them fairly well. He takes two super effective hits and is able to take my Crocodile down with a Heavy Slam, but my last Pokémon, Yavaltal, and, uh, it's a Legendary. It's amazing. Not that amazing, but... <laughs> Good enough to take down the Aggron. So there he goes. Another lovely, lovely battle. And uh, let's see what the next battle has in store for us, yes? Yes. Alright. We beat down Brightland, and now we've got Mycol Star. I've got a Latias out against his Meowstic, which, uh, that's a Psychic Pokemon. I am a Psychic Dragon, so I don't think he's going to be able to do that much. I, I think there's two versions of Meowstic. One's like more offensive, and that is the male version, and the defensive version is the female. So he's got the male version, I thought it was going to come at me, but he just ends up setting up a light screen and switching out as I uh, go for the Dragon Pulse. But he switches into a Ma Mawile, sees that coming, and uh, yeah, that resists both of my same type attacks, which ain't going to be no good. So I try to bring in the Darmanitan now, uh, he didn't put up a Reflect, is the main reason for that. But he gets a crit on his knockoff, knocks off my life orb, and uh, that really, really hurts. So, again, he probably sees the Flare Blitz coming, switches into a Love Disc, and I do some pretty good damage to it, um, but it is kind of just a fodder Pokemon. So, really sad to lose my Darmanitan so early in the fight, especially with that Mawile looming in the background. But, uh, it be what it be, we're gonna do the best we can here. So, now I send out my Genesect. Lots and lots of legendaries on this team. Go for the extreme speed just to take out the love disc before it uh, tries to scald me or do any fucking confusions shenanigans with sweet kiss. Um, and here comes a gore guys. So ice beam is not going to do that much, especially with the light screen up. So that is going to be a real pain. And he's going for the will o wisp. This is a mixed Genesect. He does have extreme speed, which will be crippled by will o wisp, but ice beam and techno blast will not be. So, uh, I go for the Technoblast now. Super effective! Oh yeah! I'm not sure what plate this thing's holding. I think it's a burn plate. So this is, uh, turns my Technoblast into a fire move, which I think is pretty cool. I do end up, uh, getting the burn, but that's just fine. We won't use extreme speed is basically what that means. No problem at all. Genesect is, uh, a fucking monster. And now his light screen is down. Probably gonna switch back into the Meow Stick. Yeah, there it is. And, um, I wish I had U-Turn or something like that. That would be a nice same type attack for Genesect. But, uh, yeah. Exactly what I thought. He's gonna set up that light screen again, especially since I'm burned. And now, uh, both of my legendaries are not gonna be able to beat that, that light screen down very easily. So, I'm gonna send in Kaimeko to, uh, burn off a few turns here. He goes for the Psychic, which would have been resisted by Genesect and Latias. Uh, but I guess it's the only attacking move he has or something like that. So if I had a Dark-type, I would use this to my advantage, uh, but I don't. <laughs> He's got a Dark-type Muck, the Alola form of Muck, which is Dark and Poison. Really, really cool. Um, kinda negates the 
dark dark types um, fighting weakness with his poison typing, which is really really cool, and also negates the poison typing psychic weakness with the dark type. Give, gives it an immunity. So the Alola Muck is definitely the preferred form of Muck if uh, I put it on my team, and I think you'll see that in my poison monotype. Anyhow, I switch back into the Genesect. Go ahead and try out the Iron Head, and uh, that works pretty well. I got my burn uh, healed by the Kaimeko because he's got his little heal bell going. So I'm looking pretty good now. Was able to take him out with an extreme speed. And now he sends in a jump pluff. And I'm worried about jump pluff speed. He is faster than Genesect. Um, so yeah, I was thinking he was going to go for sleep powder or something like that. Went for the extreme speed. Took a good chunk out. Um, if I knew that he was going to go for acrobatics maybe go for Ice Beam, something like that. Well, I wouldn't have lived anyways. So yeah, I think Extreme Speed was the right move to make. Switch now into my Kling Clang, and he switches out of there with a U-turn, um, and goes into the Mawile while I set up a substitute. So Mawile, very, very scary. There's not a whole lot that I can do against it, but I'm going to use my one neutral type attack, which is Wild Charge. And uh, yeah, Kling Clang is faster than Mawile, but not able to do that much damage. He is packing the Fire Fang, which is uh, going to do some massive, massive hurtiness. But I decide to uh, fodder out my Kling Kling here. We'll go for the gear grind, and I miss completely. <laughs> God damn it. Luckily, my Kling Kling does live one Fire Fang, but um, yeah, that is a scary, scary fuck. So we'll try the gear grind again. That's pretty good, 40% 40 dam 40 damage against the Mawile, so we're grinding him down slowly, and uh, now it is even, three Pokemon against three Pokemon, however his Pokemon are looking pretty hurt, and uh, my three are in pretty good health. So here's my Polyrath, my final Pokemon, I'm gonna go ahead and set up the Rain Dance, he's obviously scared of this thing, he brings out Meowstic, probably uh, thinking that he's gonna use the Psychic against me. But Polyrath is going to be faster. Unfortunately, I'm not packing any really high damage moves. I go for the Scald here, get hurt by my Life Orb, and Psychic, yeah, brings me really close. It is a critical hit as well, uh, which is pretty impressive that Polyrath survived that shit. Well, Meowstic goes down to the burn, so we don't have to worry about him anymore. But I'm thinking the Jump Bluff is going to come in, and there it is. Wonderful. Hit him with the Ice Beam, because now I am faster with the uh, Rain Dance boost. Unfortunately, my Polyrath goes down to the Life Orb damage, which I've spoken extensively about Life Orb. Not my favorite item, but um, you gotta use what you got. You know what I mean? So Kaimek goes back in here against the Mawile, kind of just uh, seeing if I can dent it a little bit more in order to, to get the Latias some, some ground. But actually, uh, Kaimek is going to be able to take down the Mawile with Shadow Ball because Ghost is no longer resisted by Steel in Gen 7. So, very good job. I'm glad to see Kaimeko net the winning kill. Ah, this has been Pokemon Mondays. Uh, well, technically. It's been Gen 7 Random Battles, that's for sure. <laughs> I've been Brandon Dayton, your humble narrator. Thank you so much for watching, friends. If you do remember to like, comment, and or subscribe on this episode, I'll send you a tin can. It's empty. I ate the corned beef out of it. But, uh... <laughs> I hope that you'll enjoy it. You can you can make a weapon or something from it if you're you're a gunsmith. Your gunsmithing has to be over 50. Anyways, I'll see you in the next one. And until then, bye bye. One, two, three, four. Goodbye, goodbye. See you again. Goodbye, goodbye. See you, my friends.